Welcome to Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. I'm your host, Laurie Fagan. This is the final episode, number 16, in season one of this podcast series where I've been talking to authors who then read from their mystery, suspense, or thriller short stories or a chapter from their published books. You've also heard the radio theater style sections from the audiobooks for my first two crime fiction novels, Frightful Fun House from Fade Out, and now the thrilling conclusion to L.N. Payne P.I. from my crime fiction novel audiobook, Dead Air. It is like old times. Ron's face is much pinker and not as gray as before, and he's his older, reverent self, making lewd jokes about the secretary in the podcast. We laugh as we start to record another episode. I fade in the murder mystery podcast theme music, then lower it to begin recording my voice. You're listening to a Murder in the Air mystery theater podcast called L.N. Payne P.I. I'm your host, Lauren Price. After suspecting Mr. De Palma is having an affair with his secretary, our private eye needs to catch them in the act. But how? I change my voice to reflect that of a 1940s female private investigator and read. I spend a few more days watching the De Palma and Co. door over the noon hour. Like clockwork, every day at 12, Mr. D's office doll comes to the door in short, tight skirts and low-cut blouses, looks both ways, and puts out the closed sign. At about one, she pulls it in again. Joe Barone agrees to help me with the implied impression he might get lucky with me in his dreams. But he doesn't need to know that just yet. He tells me Mr. De Palma's secretary sits at her desk behind a short wall a few feet from the front door. There's a swinging half gate in the partition, and her boss has an office in the back. I set Joe up with a little Bolex moving picture camera tucked inside a small brown wood radio under the ruse that Barone's boss wants to give Mr. D a little gift for his business. I ask him to take it in a couple of minutes before noontime and make sure the disguised device is turned on. Barone struts into the office, and when he comes out about ten minutes later, he has a wide grin on his mug. He joins me at the greasy spoon, and I wave at the waitress to bring Joe a cup of joe. Well, what did he say? Ron leans into the microphone and becomes Barone. Just like you thought, De Palma took the bait. I made sure the radio was in just the right spot in his office. Ron makes the sound of slurping a sip of coffee. But how are you going to get the film out? I continue with the next line. I'm working on it. I bring in the music full, then fade my last line under as the host. Find out her plan next time on Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. Thanks for listening. This is Lauren Price. Welcome back to Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. I'm Lauren Price. Tonight on L.N. Payne P.I., our private investigator hopes to prove to Mrs. De Palma that Mr. De Palma is indeed fooling around with his secretary. She manages to put a disguised film camera inside his office and now has to retrieve it. I decide Mrs. D. needs to drop by her husband's office. I figure she can make some excuse about going to a doctor's appointment and being in the neighborhood and all. Then she can spot the clock, say it would look better in their house, and bring it out to me. So the next day, she arrives in a cab, goes into De Palma & Co., and a few minutes later comes out with a box just like we planned. But her lips are tight and her eyes furious, a look which lasts all the way to my table at the diner. She's not quite as pale and sickly as she has been, but she's madder than two male cats in a burlap bag. I've got a damn good idea what she saw inside. I'm such an idiot. Little Miss Round Heels just flaunted her wares in front of me, never even caring whether or not I knew what she and my husband are up to. I'm sorry, Mrs. De Palma. I reach for the clock and open up the back. Sure enough, the film has run all the way through the canister. I have to send this off to be processed, Mrs. D, and it'll take a couple of days. How you doing at home? Oh, 
as I assumed, the flowers and dinners out have stopped again. He makes me a cocktail every night now, but I know he's putting something in it. What is she daft? Then come up with an excuse not to drink it. Oh, you don't have to worry. I've come up with a better idea. Just what does our scorned wife have in mind, and what are the prospects for the poisoning pair? Stay tuned when the next podcast of Murder in the Air Mystery Theater continues. I'm Lauren Price. Thanks for listening. Good evening, I'm Lauren Price. Tonight on Murder in the Air Mystery Theater and the continuing saga of L.N. Payne P.I., she investigates the case of a couple conspiring to kill each other in what looks to be a love triangle. But the sparks are just beginning to fly. Sometimes the truth just ain't pretty. The silent film shows exactly what I thought it would. Mr. D. doing his secretary right there on her desk. No sound was needed to confirm my suspicions. Mrs. De Palma is looking more like her old self when she comes to the office to view the moving pictures. So what are you going to do, Mrs. D? I have all the proof I need to file for divorce. She puts down eight big C's on my desk. I think this should take care of everything. Thanks. I slide the money into my hand and tuck it in my brassiere. Then what? She has a wistful, resigned look on her face. Probably go back to my hometown, start over. Heavy footsteps plod up the wooden stairs and approach the office door. Mrs. D and I look at each other. I mouth to her. Mr. D? There's a rapping on the glass, soft but urgent. I usher Mrs. D into the closet and sit down at my chair. Come in, I say. The door swings open and Mr. D shuffles through the door. Once again, he's hunched over and pale, holding his stomach. Mr. D, you don't look so good. Someone's trying to poison me again. I'll admit I'm not always the most scrupulous gal in town, especially when it comes to taking money from both a client and his wife. But this craziness has got to stop. Look, Mr. D, I know Mrs. D was sliding you arsenic in your eggs because she was just plain lonely. But turnabout's not necessarily fair play. I also know you was putting arsenic in her cocktails every night because she found out you've been fooling around with your secretary. Now she's probably going to file for divorce, and it's Splitsville for the two of you. What? No, that can't be. I I can't. I, I need. I really love my wife. I blink a couple of times. You got a real strange way of showing that, Mr. D. Just then, Mrs. De Palma bursts out of the closet. Oh, Harry, do you? Because I really love you, too. The pair of them embrace like they was 17-year-olds. I don't normally blush at much anymore, but even I had to turn away. I'm sorry I've been giving you arsenic in your eggs, dear. Mrs. D. sweetly puts her hands on his face. Let's start all over again, shall we? Oh, honey, and I'm sorry I've been putting arsenic in your vodka. He gives her a smooch right on the kisser. Yes, we'll start fresh, just like it used to be. Why, you dirty, rotten louse! Through the open door, who should fly in but Mr. De Palma's platinum-haired secretary, along with a whoosh of cheap perfume. What will happen when all three parties in the love triangle meet? Don't miss next time when Murder in the Air Mystery Theater continues. Thanks for listening. This is Lauren Price. Welcome back once again to Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. I'm Lauren Price. We're nearing the thrilling conclusion of L.N. Payne P.I. with the hostile gathering of a cheating husband, his lonely spouse, and his voluptuous lover. Mr. De Palma's secretary has just rushed into our privatized office to find Mr. and Mrs. De Palma in a loving embrace. 
You're a stinking rotten liar. The blonde bimbo bursts through the door wearing another skirt tighter than Nellie's glove. She's so livid, her pair of jugs look like they could fall out of her V-neck top any second. I should have known you wasn't going to leave your wife. This was a scene I never expected in my joint, and I don't know how this flim-flam is going to play out. My getaway sticks are tucked under the desk, so I slide my right hand down to my thigh to the holstered derringer and slip it out just in case. The celluloid grip feels cool in my hand. Lizzie, baby! Mr. D drops his hands off Mrs. D. It's not what you think. Mrs. D looks at the platinum homewrecker, then back at her husband. What do you mean, it's not what you think? Isn't it? Mr. D's head flips back and forth between the two dames so fast, I think it's going to fly off. Honey! He glances at Mrs. D. Baby! He glances at his secretary. Mr. D holds up his hands, palms out. Wait, I can explain. I figure feathers are about to fly, so I take a crack at cooling these quarrelers down. Look, this thing is done. We're all big boys and girls here, so let's just be square. Be square? They all shout at once, looking straight at me. Lizzie, the secretary, gives her boss the up-and-down with slits for eyes. You haven't been honest with me since I came to work for you. But, baby... Mrs. D looks at her husband, her jealous green eyes flashing. You haven't been honest with me since we've been married. But, honey... Just then, Mrs. D pulls out a beautiful Hopkins and Allen with a pearl handle from her pocket, even though she's the last person I expect to be wearing iron. She aims the gun straight at her husband. You're not getting away with your double-timing schemes anymore, Harry. But honey is all that escapes from Mr. D's lips. Don't honey me. His wife is mad as all get out, but her hand is steady. Her eyes look like they'll pierce Mr. D's body before her rod will. You've been cheating on me for years, and I've had it. Now hold it right there. I stand up, my Remington pointed at the dame with the gun. Everyone needs to cool down before... Oh, no, you don't! The tart tomato in the tight attire draws a sweet little Baird 32 from her double Ds and points it at Mr. De Palma. I'm tired of all your lies, Harry. But baby... Mr. D pleads. Don't baby me. Lizzie barks back at him, her baby blues blazing. I'm not sure who to set my sights on, so my arm flips right and left a couple of times between the two belligerent bims. Then, as if I wasn't even there, both dames swing their pistols toward each other. It's, it's all, all your, your fault! They scream in unison, and the two fire at each other. <laughs> Mrs. D crumples to the floor as Mr. D yells, Honey! with a shocked expression on his mug. Lizzie, who is still standing, recovers from the recoil and manages to pump metal into Mr. De Palma before she falls to the carpet. Mr. D ekes out, Baby! Grabs his gut and collapses under the wispy trails of gun smoke. No! I yell, but no one's alive to hear. This was not the ending our private investigator expected. There's one more episode in the case of the philandering loan shark, his rose-loving housewife, and the mistress with the maximum. Next on Murder in the Air Mystery Theater, I'm Lauren Price. Good night. You're listening to a Murder in the Air Mystery Theater podcast. This is the last episode in the tale of L.N. Payne P.I., where our female private detective, witnesses three murders in her office. Well, it isn't exactly my ticket to the big time, but I do get my 15 minutes of fame. One of the daily rags blares, three stiffs snuffed in P.I. Dames digs. Another news hawk pins, trio torpedoed in love triangle. The excitement of three dead bodies in one day finally dies down and with no skin off my nose. At that point, I figure insurance fraud and infidelity by spouses ain't so bad after all. Man, it's just eggs in the coffee. I got no kick, so I go back to work sitting pretty with a little cush and plenty of zest for my job. I'm L.N. Payne, private investigator. See you next time. 
So it looks like our private eye solved the case of the poisonous pear, but they expired anyway, along with the sperm secretary. This concludes the latest episode of LN Pain PI. I'm Lauren Price, your host. Other voices in this show were performed by Julie Lee and D.W. Thomas. Thanks for listening and be careful. There might be murder in the air. Good night. Characters in L.N. Payne P.I. were played by D.W. Thomas as Mr. De Palma and Joe Barone. Julie Lee as Mrs. De Palma and Lizzie. Lori Fagan read the narrator Lauren Price and L.N. Payne, private investigator. Thank you so much for listening to Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. We hope you've enjoyed the author interviews and readings, as well as the audiobook portions from Fade Out and Dead Air. We'll be on hiatus for the summer, but we'll return again in September 2023 with more interviews with authors and segments from their books or stories, along with the audiobook segments from my third crime fiction novel, Bleeder, in the Behind the Mic Mysteries. That story is called Art of the Steel. Thanks to Devin Hancock for original music and for editing, mixing, and mastering these episodes. Thanks also to Lauren Fagan for his original music for the audiobook portions. If you are listening on the podcast platform of your choice, please subscribe and leave a review or provide us with some feedback. If you're on YouTube at Read Lori Fagan, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and click on the bell to be notified when a new episode has been released. And for more freebies, check out our Patreon page at Murder in the Air Mystery Theater. Thanks so much for listening, and come back again for more Murder in the Air. 